Immediately following World War II, morale was high. The United States had victories in Europe and the Pacific, and soldiers were coming home, reuniting with their loved ones. Everyone was ready to live out the promised American dream. Get a job, buy a house, marry, and raise a family. But instead of immediate prosperity, there were fears of a recession, possibly another depression. New home building was slow during the economic downturn before the war, and material shortages during the war ground the construction industry to a halt. So when World War II veterans went looking for housing, they were met with a lack of supply. After World War II, the Veterans Emergency Housing Program was developed and they were interested in building mass housing for the millions of returning veterans. The program was quick to fund housing developments across the country. And with the GI Bill home loans, areas like St. Anne were developed for the working class. More than 12 million new homes were needed during the first decade after the war and the U.S. government was open to innovative solutions to the post-war housing shortage, including one idea from the president of an enamel company. Uh, Carl Strandlund, he was asking for release of some of the steel that the United States was holding for the war effort. They primarily built gas stations out of enameled steel. The National Housing Program said, well, we can, we can give you steel but not for gas stations. If you want to make houses, mass-produced houses, then, then great, you're in business. Stanlin committed to mass-produced prefabricated houses made of enameled steel, steel with glass fused into the surface. The exterior walls were steel, the roofs were enameled steel, the interior walls were enameled steel, the ceilings were enameled steel. Stanlin had high hopes for this new venture, so much so that he committed to producing 100 houses a day, 30,000 homes in the first two years. With a $12.5 million construction loan from the U.S. government, the newly formed Lustrin Corporation began manufacturing all steel prefabricated homes for communities across the U.S., including St. Louis. With something like 78 houses in the St. Louis area, St. Louis region, which includes a little bit over in, on the east side. The highest concentration of Lestron homes were in Webster Groves. Of the 21 originally built, only 13 remain today. Well, the first thing everyone does when they come in is they come and tap the walls because the walls are metal. Okay, good. Cause Everything I, on the I, wall is I, magnetized. I to... Everything hanging up is on a it magnet. hollow in there. This is the Lustron home of Diane Anderson, located near Shrewsbury. There have been a few changes and a conventional addition made to her house over the years, but it is still very much made of steel. Lustrons were built using 3,000 parts, and a new owner had special clips that fit between the wall slates where objects could hang from. But that was almost 80 years ago. Like that's a magnet okay. with a hook. Interesting. When you bought this house, did you know what you were buying? No. I called my friend Martha and said, have you ever heard of a Lustron? She said, oh my God, you're looking at a Lustron? She was so excited. And, uh, you know, I said, well, it's got this great garden. It's a great layout, but it's all metal. <laughs> so and then it, for uh, housewarming, everybody bought you magnets. I, I got a lot of magnets <laughs> as gifts the first year. It's true. <laughs> Marketed as a new standard for living, the first Lustron home was produced in March 1948. All are about a thousand square feet and had either two or three bedrooms. Producing the parts required a one million square foot production facility on 106 acres of land at the former Curtis Wright plant in Columbus, Ohio. Using nine miles of conveyors, the materials were manufactured like cars. I mean, they ran into lots of production problems, unfortunately. 
Uh, one of them was figuring out how do you how do you actually transport this thing, this house, mm -hmm. and they designed a um, a truck that was able to hold three thousand part metal parts and could be trucked essentially anywhere anywhere in the country. In, in that's theory. one truck. One truck for so, one house. One house. So. That's 30,000 trips. You don't even want to go too far. Right. You're not driving to California from Ohio. Well, and, and of course, it was more expensive if you ordered a house from California as opposed to Ohio or Indiana, which is why Ohio and Indiana has, uh, have the most number of, of homes in the country. Lustrin homes were expensive to make, and they were expensive to move. Combine those factors with loans from the Reconstruction Finance Corporation that couldn't be paid back, the Lustrin Corporation filed for bankruptcy in 1950. Stanlin promised 30,000 homes. Less than 2,500 were built. In 2021, Wollenberg accounted for 56 remaining Lustrins in St. Louis. Why are these homes important today? Well, they're important because um, they represent a, a very significant moment in time in, in housing history at the end of World War II when there was a huge need to build a, a mass quantity of, of housing. And this was one of the, uh, the solutions that was started, and unfortunately it didn't come to full fruition. But they were built to last. And all these years later, this was in fact the house Diane has been waiting for. Love at first sight. For Living St. Louis, I'm Anne Marie Berger.